and then I was blind. And uh, so we were very happy just when I rushed here that we finished the surgery and all 50 events turned out to be the right side of things. It's almost like throwing coin 50 times. You have to have 50 times in succession, you know, heads. But that's a very, very small chance, right? You take 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5, you know. But in terms of um, the genetic combination, for example, for our vision, uh, you know, you're going from cornea to lens to retina to photoreceptor to uh, optic nerve to chiasm to, you know, central nervous system for visual interpretation. That's astronomically more complex than a 50 step. And in fact, that was how I started initially questioning uh, whether the atheist view uh, was right. I came from China, escaped what they call a cultural revolution, where all the kids from high school graduated from high school were deported to the poorest part of the country and condemn a lifetime of poverty and hard labor for life in China from 1966 to 1976 is what they call cultural revolution. So I eventually made my way to America as a very poor student with $50. So I was not interested in anything else other than the opportunity to study science and uh, you know, have a life, be happy. So I was studying in Boston at Harvard Medical School, the structure of human eyes. And I realized that the complexity of the photoreceptor arrangement and uh, all the signal transduction pathway, you know, the number of cells in our head, in each one of us, involved in visual cap vision capturing and visual interpretation in every one of us. The number of cells involved is greater than the number of stars that we have discovered so far in the universe. So the problem is all these cells have to be lined up in a particular way in order for the vision to actually be captured, interpreted. So I was in crisis. You know, I thought I was an atheist myself and I thought this is simply mathematically not possible. So then I met a professor who saw I was in crisis as a previous staunch atheist student. He took me out for lunch. And he said, I mean, what's a car street? I said, there's a car. He said, what's the difference between a car and a human brain? I said, the human brain is a lot more complicated. And he said, okay, can you imagine a pile of random pieces of metal assemble itself into a car? I said, no way. Then he leaned over, he said, how about human brain? So the chance for this complex visual system to have the functionality with all these number of cells, neurons, is to be able to do it right, is smaller than the chance that you get out of here, blindfold yourself, jump in a car, successfully arrive in New York. Think about the chance. You're going to hit all kinds of things before you ever have a chance to get to New York. So it is the very unlikely, so you know, many of us are scientists, right? At the end of the day, we are evidence-based. You know, the great things about being a scientist, we're logical. We can be persuaded if there's evidence. You know, a long time ago, that nobody thought the Golgi apparatus that existed inside the cell. And there was this great authority in biology and always declared no Golgi apparatus inside the cell. Until one graduate student present his graduate, this was in London, many years ago, present his research, which showed the Golgi apparatus does exist inside the cell. Then this famous professor, world famous, stood up quickly at the back of the um, auditorium. So everybody was scared. Oh, professor is going to chastise this poor graduate student and throw him out of the room or something. The professor walked up quickly, and everybody got scared. He walked up, went all the way to this graduate student, 
look at the presentation slide, look at the graduate student, extend his hand, shake hands, say, you're right. As a scientist, we are evidence-based. No matter how, what is our previous preconceived notion, if evidence that points us to something, we have the gut and the courage to believe. In this case, the Human Genome Project, three building base pair, the complex visual system, that it's just not possible, unfathomable. it can arise from randomness.